So as we're talking about chord personalities, uh, we've used this term progression, chord progression. Um, you know, now in college theory, they definitely have a, a differentiation between progression and retrogression. But for what we're doing, for all intents and purposes, pop, rock, modern worship music, uh, a progression is just a series of chords uh, in sequence. And we talked about how the personalities sort of take you on a journey as you go from this chord to that chord. Some chords feel like you're moving forward. Some chords feel like they're pulling you back home. Some chords will feel like a detour if you borrow a chord from a different chord family. But then you feel that sense of resolution when you finally get back to the one chord, the, the boss, the big kahuna, the home bass. In the key of C major, it'd be the C. Um, so uh, the chord progression is just that journey. It's that journey through all these different chords. So we talked about the one, just like Dorothy says, you know, there's no place like home. Everybody senses the home chord. The four, uh, that's the subdominant, the, the F chord in the key of C, uh, that's like the one chord's best friend. You know, that's its partner. Think about, uh, just think of the Hallelujah Chorus. One, four, uh, one, one, four, one. You know, they work together. Think of, uh, Amazing Grace. One to four to one. You hear lots of four one all through music. Those guys are good friends. The other primary triad, the dominant, the five, in the key of C, that's the G. That's the strongest pull in Western music. Um, this chord is, I don't want to say 90%, maybe 80% of the time now. It's the chord that's going to draw you to home. It's the chord that goes right before home. Think of, uh, how great is our God, sing to me, how great. Here's the five chord, how great is our, and everybody knows what's coming next, is the home bass. One. So the dominant has a strong pull to the one, the five to the one. In fact, in just a second, we're going to talk about cadences. It's the strongest cadence in Western music, for sure. Now, um, actually that relationship, the 5-1 the relationship, if you think about it, you know, here's the G, it pulls you upward by a fourth. That upward by a fourth movement is kind of like central to all chord progressions. That upward by a fourth movement is a really strong pull. When you feel music pulling you forward, a lot of times it's because of that upward by a fourth relationship, which, I mean, obviously you realize you can call it upward by a fourth, you're saying the same thing as downward by a fifth, right? You get that? Because if I'm here and I walk up four, it's the same, I get to the same C as if I was here and I walk down a fifth, right? So upward by fourth, downward by fifth, same thing. Which, if you notice, we go back to that circle of fifths, that's the relationship that the circle of fifths is built on. So uh, enough about that. So you got the primaries. Now, I want to dive into, I want to add one of the secondary chords because seriously, you can add one of the secondary triads. I'm talking about the one that's built on six. And you can play, now, now we're up to probably 90, 95% of the modern praise and worship songs we've got going. Now, so here's the, the one, the four, the five, the six. There's the six. Now it's not one of the primary triads, but it's probably the, the secondary triad you hear most. Um, and it's funny to me, like when I think of these four chords, I can't help but think of like the very first song that you know every high school dance you go to, you can't not hear heart and soul. And surely somebody's gonna find a piano in the house and play the duet, right? Well, what that is, is one, six, four, five, right? Right? One, six, four, five. Now, when I think of those four chords, uh, the first worship song that pops into mind is, uh, you know, Chris Tomlin's, How great, there's the one chord, Sing with me how six is our God, da 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 da, four, mm, five, da da, it's one. Now, we wouldn't do it in that high a key, but I'm just staying in C so that you can. You can get the picture that um, one, six, four, five. Millions of songs use those progressions. Now, just uh, to kind of bring the rest of the secondary triads in there, think about, uh, you know, we need the two and the three chord. 
Uh, do you know I could sing of your love forever? When you use the two and the three chord, obviously we're walking right up the scale. So think of, uh, I could sing of your love forever. Two chord, three. I could sing of your love four, five. Two chord. Four, five, back to one. Uh, the other song, Here, There, and Everywhere by the Beatles. Just walk up the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord. So you can see how the, the other secondary triads, the two and the three, can work in. Now, of course, what we've left out is the seventh. Now, we said the seventh is kind of a rare bird in pop music. Uh, that's the diminished triad, you know, in B, uh, the note B. You just don't hear that very often. Actually, what you hear more often is the borrowed chord, the flat seven. So in other words, in the key of C, you're probably in a pop song anyway, a rock song, you're probably much more likely to hear not a B, but a B flat. You know, I played for you before. Right? Or uh, thinking of Christian songs, uh, think about... Uh, um, uh, just to get an idea what that sound is like, like Revelation song. Um, or how about uh, uh, all of God's people sing glory, flat seven. Glory, glory, amen. So that flat seven chord is actually more of a likely uh, thing that you'll find rather than the chord actually built on B. Uh, we'll go into a little bit later. That's a borrowed chord, uh, actually borrowed from either the blues scale or actually like the mixolydian mode. We're going to dive into some of that a little bit later. But right there, you've pretty much covered 95% of the chords that you're going to run into in most modern worship, praise and worship music.